casinos, attack ads, Bollywood. It is the Wild West in British Columbia, and that's why we're so happy to chat more about Battleground BC with Emile Scheffel. He's a BC Liberal right here in our Ottawa newsroom. And in Vancouver, NDP supporter and Vancouver City Councillor Jeff Meggs. And uh, Jeff, maybe we'll start off with this issue of, of ads. And I want to ask you, uh, you know, obviously the NDP are right now tops in the polls. Adrian Dixon says he doesn't want to run a nasty campaign. I wonder, is that a mistake to swear those off when the going gets tough? You know, you got a week to go to a, in an election. Should he be swearing off, uh, you know, maybe pointing out some negative things about Premier Clark? Well, I don't think he's swearing off saying negative things about the government's performance, but he's sworn off saying p personal attacks against her and her personality and so on. He's been very careful about that, and I think that's been well received. Uh, what about you, Emil? Uh, where, where do you think, uh, as, as you probably know, I mean, a negative attack ads work, and I, every voter decries them, says, oh, don't like those, but they move votes at some point. Well, I want to start off, David, by complimenting Jeff on a great article he had published today in a BC newspaper, congratulating Jim Sinclair on his re-election as the president of the BC Federation of Labour. Jim, as we know, is uh, helping, along with the BC Federation, the NDP, to write their election platform for the campaign by their own admission. So I think what you're going to start seeing is the NDP's proxies in the union movement and elsewhere saying some pretty nasty things, taking the gloves off, as they do in every election cycle, and maybe letting Mr. Dix try to keep his hands clean, at least in the public eye. So that's my prediction. We'll see if it bears out. Well, that, uh, Jeff, that sounds like a basis for a negative ad right there coming from a PC liberal, that the you know, unions are writing Adrian Dix's platform. Well, Jim Shepard, uh, formerly of Canfor, a disgruntled millionaire who uh, makes no secret of his contempt for the NDP, has raised money for an extraordinarily negative, uh, I think it's called Venomous campaign today by one of our top uh, political columnists, n directed strictly at Adrian Dix and his personal uh, characteristics. And, you know, this has uh, already begun from the Liberal side of the equation. Uh, the, the, what we're going to see, I think, from the NDP is a very straightforward campaign about the issues facing British Columbians. Uh, the solutions that Adrian Dix is proposing in a very careful and pragmatic way. And so far, that's been very successful with voters. Well, one of the things we've seen this week uh, that sort of plays into this whole uh, tone of ads is a new poll that shows the B.C. Liberals are inching up. The Conservatives are collapsing and NDP is still doing pretty strong. Um, let me get your thoughts uh, uh, first, Emil. What do you attribute to uh, this, you know, this slight rise in the poll? And I guess the question is, can the Liberals inch forward fast enough to get to the finish line by May the 14th? Well, we know to take polls with a grain of salt. That's, uh, you know, an iron rule in politics. But another iron rule of politics is you want to be really careful about peaking too soon. I think that's what happened with the NDP in the past few months. They got a little bit overconfident. They started kind of measuring the drapes in the Premier's office for Adrian Dix's move-in. And they're starting to see it's going to be a bit of a tougher fight than they expected. I can tell you in that last Angus Reid poll, I was real happy to see the interior where I'm from in an absolute dead heat. I think that's where the comeback's going to start. Uh, my hometown of Kamloops and uh, that whole region. So I think the people across BC are waking up. They're starting to hear our message, which is that we really don't want to go back to the, 1990, uh, the 1990s. And I tell you, the small towns up there in the interior and throughout BC, people there still remember what happened to them in the 1990s. Those towns hollowed out and they don't want to go back to those dark days. Jeff, is there any concern? I mean, obviously, I guess you'd rather be 15 points up, but uh, polls are going to move. Campaigns matter. Um, what do you take from, from some of these polls, particularly the idea that in the interior, a lot of seats there, and yes, it looks like the, the Clark Liberals are, are again in contention. Well, it's great that Emil's worried about uh, the Premier peaking too soon. She seems to have peaked on the day she started, and that's been what's been causing her so much problem and so much division in Liberal ranks and so much concern about a conservative resurgence. I think that the NDP support is strong and it's very strong among people who voted Liberal last time as well. What the problem faced by the current government is that it's offered solutions that have been rejected by British Columbians, of course, with the HST, and uh, has no solutions for some of the other big issues that are there in terms of energy policy and many other things. So as a result, uh, you know, we talked about proxies earlier uh, and, and Emil uh, didn't mention the, the enormous uh, negative campaign that's been launched by so-called concerned citizens from BC who are trying to go back to the 90s, hoping they can find some argument that will save uh, the current government today. Uh, Emil, let me ask you about, I asked Jeff about the interior, uh, but let me ask you about Vancouver Island and Vancouver proper, areas where the New Democrats seem to be a bit stronger. Uh, what do the BC Liberals have to do to connect to those folks? Well, I think the, uh, the message that resonated in the interior is also going to resonate in the lower mainland. It's just a matter of time. I think uh, people need to be communicated with over a long period of time. That message has to be repeated. 
And so we're going to keep repeating the same thing. And it's a simple message. Our plan is working for BC. The jobs plan is creating jobs. And that's going to continue under uh, another four years of BC Liberal government. The alternative is Adrian Dix and the NDP's hidden plan, which, uh, you know, you showed one of his press conferences earlier. I wish he'd call a press conference to just tell us what his plan is for BC, how he's going to pay for those $7 billion in promises that we've counted up coming from them. And uh, until BC citizens hear some answers, I think there are going to be some suspicions there that Adrian Dix is going to have uh, his work cut out for him to address. Uh, uh, Jeff, you've, you've seen this in any number of campaigns across the country, probably, where one opponent accuses the other of having a hidden agenda. And you know that's going to come at Mr. Dix, but presumably until the campaign comes and the platform's there. Yeah, but uh, Mr. Dix has made it clear from the get-go that there'll be a fully costed platform put in front of the voters in due course. And we're very, very close to the election. I think the day when that platform is unveiled is very close as well. I mean, we're now in the, uh, in the range of 110 days or something to the vote. So it's very, very difficult to uh, keep repeating the same message, which has not worked for the last year, and hope that it'll suddenly turn the corner. Yeah, I think there is broad support for the New Democrats right across the province because of the leadership that uh, Adrian Dix has shown on a whole number of issues. And he's, he's continuing that today by urging uh, further action down the road to curb the kind of negative advertising we're seeing now, which is contributing, to, contributing nothing really to an understanding of the issues facing British Columbians. Um, last word to you then, uh, Emil, as well, uh, just on the, the, I mean, throwing a hidden agenda at somebody at some point, people kind of turn off that idea, though. Well, look, all of uh, Jeff's words there are cold comfort for, just to give you one example, the truck loggers of Vancouver Island. They've been asking the NDP, what's your plan for forestry? What's your plan in terms of uh, raw log exports and regulations around that? And the NDP is meeting that with uh, sort of a contemptuous silence. They're giving those loggers the cold shoulder, and there are forestry communities both on Vancouver Island and all over the province that are waiting for some answers on what the NDP's agenda is. The NDP said, oh, well, you're going to have to wait until uh, after the next election. Well, that's a heck of a gamble when you're trying to plan to put uh, food on your family's table and provide for your loved ones in your community. So uh, I don't think that's going to wash with the voters. Well, if the voters are happy with the current government, the polls would be very different. Well, they're, they're changing, Jeff. You just keep watching. Um, little by little, inch by inch, maybe they will. Who knows? Jeff Meggs in uh, Vancouver, Emil Shuffle, uh, a Kamloops boy, but in Ottawa tonight. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Appreciate it. Pleasure, David. Thank Take you, care. David.